Okay, I came out here extensively today to um, harvest some cleavers, which are these little fellas here, the ones that cling to your clothing. But also I'm finding that this, um, what we call the jack of the hedge, or hedge garlic, which is excellent. It's um, a garlicky, garlicky flavoured mustard brassica. So it's a member of the cabbage family. And uh, it, it's really quite tasty. I like to pluck the leaves and just, just nibble on them. Mmm. It's a decent salad leaf, as long as you catch it really quick. Because um, it does tend to wilt very quick. So I'll be harvesting a few of them. But the main reason I'm out here today is to harvest some of these clicky, catchy, gorgeous cleavers. Another great plant. You can just eat it. It's got, a, to me, it's got the flavour of um, pea pods or mange to pea pods. I do apologise for the sound quality in this because um, I've come out without my little Lavalier mic that fits in the bottom of this um, device. But there's a, an abundance of cleavers here. It's um, a nice bright day, as you can see there, but it's not as bright as last time I came out which was absolutely glorious but uh, this is just a short trip to harvest some cleavers and then I'll show you what I do with those and how we turn that into a, a nice meal. So like with most plants uh, and certainly most uh, wild edibles the um, young tips are always going to be the best for eating and you need to harvest them from a position where a dog is unlikely to relieve himself. So um, here we've got a gorgeous collection of uh, edibles. We've got stinging nettle and cleavers, which often grow together. I'll be harvesting a few stinging nettles. And again, I just take the tips from about here upwards or maybe just from that node um, from that node up or from there upwards depending on the season this is quite early in the season so you can take a bit more of the tip the young blossoms and leaves of uh, hawthorn are quite tasty and good to eat although you don't want to eat too much of that But it's still good to eat. Incidentally, the whole of the nettle plant is um, edible. Uh, of course, the aerial part is um, edible for sure. But also the interconnecting root system, which is quite intricate, it's also edible. I personally prefer the tips, which I use as a kind of spinach. And a delicious one too. I'm not much of a fan of uh, bikes on these paths. Come here to get away from machines. But that's just me. And everybody's entitled to their way. See you in the kitchen. So the first thing I do when I get home is to uh, take them out the uh, the collecting bag and then just lay them out and give all the creepy crawlies a chance to ex ex uh, escape. 
So once all the creepy crawlies have escaped from those, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll give them a good wash and drain them and then we'll start making the pesto. I've also got some nettles there which I've collected which I'll be blanching and uh, maybe serve that as a spinach or um, we'll see anyway, I'll see what I'll do with that. I can always blanch it and then freeze it. Oh right, cleaver's pesto. You've seen the forage. This is the cook. Well, not that we're cooking it, we're just preparing it. Because we don't cook this one, we just blend it. So, I've got, what? Couple of, um, let's call it a grasp. Couple of grasps of cleavers which have been uh, washed and drained. Got my trusty uh, food processor. I've got 80 grams of um, Parmesan flakes. I've got one clove of garlic which I've finely chopped up, which is down here. I've got, I'll be using about this much lemon, it's about a quarter of a lemon. And uh, I've got about 100 grams of walnuts. You can use pine nuts. Um, I've even heard of people using Brazil nuts and cashew nuts. I've, I've used cashew nuts myself on occasion, but usually mixed with either pine nuts or with walnuts. So uh, I've got that little bit of cleaver on the side because I'm going to use that as a garnish. I've got my hedge garlic, which is what? It's a little uh, slack handful of hedge garlic. I've got some salt, got some pepper, and I've got some olive oil over here. And uh, that's all I'm going to need to make this wonderful, wonderful pesto. So I'm going to have to chop these up a bit at a time. So I'll get them into the uh, I'll get them into the food processor, and they're called cleavers because they stick to you. They're easy to pick up but hard to throw away. So I'll get that whiz down until it's uh, workable. Then I'll get back to you. So with uh, patience and plenty of olive oil. And by pushing it down and whizzing it and pushing it down and whizzing it and adding olive oil to it, you'll get it to roughly this texture. Uh, once you've got this texture, everything else can go in. So I'm going to put in my hedge garlic. I'm going to put in a little squeeze of lemon. And we'll see if it needs any more later. I'm going to add all my garlic into it as well. I like it garlicky, that's why I've added the extra garlic. And in go the nuts, so it's everything goes in there. And because it's only 80 grams of cheese, I'm just going to put a lot in. If it lets me. I'm just going to save a couple of flakes of that for garnish. And then tip the rest in. And then we'll get that blended down until it's really a smooth paste. Okay. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Right, now's the time for a taste test. Mm -mm. That is good. Needs a bit of salt. So, just put a little salt in to start with, see how it's like. And it's gonna need a bit more of the lemon, so I'm gonna give that another squeeze. We'll see how we go with that. And because I am a pepper nut, I'm going to have to put some pepper in there. And then I'll just blend that to mix. Right, that's all blended in now to taste it. Ah. Oh. That's lovely. Mm. That's just, just right. That's absolutely perfect. Fabulous. I, I don't need to do anything to that. Um, I'll show you um, that served up with some penne pasta in the stills at the end of the video. 
So uh, thanks for joining me on this forage and, and cook. And um, uh, another thing I forgot to mention was you can blend this down as smooth or as chunky as you like. I like it semi-chunky with little bits of nuts uh, crunching in it. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, pasta sauce. So that's it packed away. Um, you can freeze it, but I don't think it freezes particularly well. It it doesn't come out with quite the, the, the same textures, probably the same flavours, but the textures are not very good. So you're better off making it fresh. It will keep for about, well, I would say about five days in uh, in your chill, but I promise you it's so tasty, it probably won't last that long. It really is delicious. So uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up and um, make a comment below. I'll try and get back to your comments. I've tried to get back to every comment and so far I think I've done pretty well in that. And uh, tell your friends, you know, and uh, something like 87, maybe more percent of you who watch this don't subscribe. Um, I would ask that perhaps um, you consider subscribing. It costs you nothing and um, it helps me beat the YouTube algorithm and earn a few more bob so I can get out and do some more fancy uh, locations and uh, more interesting places for you to see. Thanks for watching.